Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition. It is our play-by-email series against XTRG. It is February 20th of 1942. We're about to issue orders for our February 21st turn of 1942. Uh, the war is going as about you would expect at this stage of the war, very strongly in favor of the Japanese. Um, but there have been momentary successes. I'd say the biggest sort of obstacle, the biggest problem that we've faced so far, there's two big issue areas. One of them is in China, uh, where we have uh, been driven out of Changsha, and uh, Japanese forces uh, are threatening to cut off our retreat. Well, they kind of already have cut off our retreat um, by taking some bases in our rear. And then another uh, place where things have gone worse than history is... Uh, on the island of New Caledonia, uh, near Australia. Those are sort of the two most threatening Japanese moves thus far. You can see the Japanese are continuing to bombard Wenkao on the Chinese coast. They're continuing to move up the island chain along uh, near Java. They're continuing to land troops all along these southern islands at Bima, at uh, Rudang. The good thing for us is none of these bases have adequate air facilities, and so he's still going to be forced to support his invasion of Java, either out of Celebs, Borneo, or um, or bringing in carriers. Now, Borneo is is too far for ideal range. His, his planes can make it with drop tanks, but it's not an ideal setup. Uh, and the same is true from uh, Celebs. This is his aircraft... Uh, can either make it just to Java uh, within the range of normal uh, prior to extended radius, or they need drop tanks. I'm not sure. Um, the drop tanks make the Zero and the other aircraft very long-ranged, but um, it is you know one of those things where ideally you want your aircraft inside drop tank range and operating in normal radiuses. You can see there a Japanese sub hit one of our AKLs off the Australian coast. Good for us. There were no troops on board. I'm drinking a local um, IPA uh, today, uh, Brass Monkey. It's by a brewery called Spiteful. It's made in Chicago, which is happens to be where I live. So um, supporting local, drinking local uh, during this time of uh, economic uncertainty. All right, so more fighter sweeps in China. He's flying recon or bombing or sweeps or whatever it is over our troops in China. and also uh, over that sort of central southern bases. Okay. A lot of fighter sweeps. Haven't seen much in the way of actual bombing raids yet, though. Hey, Mexicans. Oh, just as I say that, 21 sallies are hitting our troops to the southwest of Yichang. My hope is this isn't a very uh, a very interesting turn, because I don't have a lot going on this turn, so interesting typically means bad when you're on the defensive. Thank you very much for the follow, Tig Gestabrook. Dive bombing over Batan. It's really loud in my ear. Oh, okay. Rest and refits for his uh, air crews after a couple of days of hard operations? Perhaps, perhaps. I'm not sure he can afford much in the way of rest and refitting if he's really trying to cut off our, our forces here. He's trying to drive in behind them as they pull out of Changsha. Changsha fell last turn, I think it was. The whole war has been XTRG going hard. Well, it is... Uh, you know, it is 1942, early 1942. Japan kind of has to go hard to have any hope. We will get our move eventually. Okay, looks like we're mostly through the turn. Uh, more bombardment attacks at Wenkao. Bombardment attacks at Kaigan. Deliberate attacks here against some Dutch forces on the island of Timor. Those troops sort of, I think they're in the middle of nowhere. They're not even on a base. Uh, they surrendered finally, so that's 905 Dutch prisoners um, for no Japanese loss. F for them. Hopefully they make it to prison camps. Okay, Japanese just took one of the islands south of Celebs. I don't think that has a, a good airfield, but we'll have to take a look.
And that's about it for the turn. So a very uneventful turn. Um, we'll have to take a look at what is actually going on in terms of non-combatant stuff, but not a lot in the way of actual fighting this turn. Going through the upgrading phase, we'll see the ships and aircraft and units starting to uh, deploy here in a second. Okay. Van Hammerschuk arrives. I think we just got our first light anti-aircraft cruiser, as well as some fighter squadrons arriving in San Diego. I think those were all squadrons that were sent from uh, the East Coast. All right. First things first, let's take a look at China before we look anywhere else. Oh, he apparently has already moved one unit out of Changsha. I think that was only a day ago. And we do not have a... For fuck's sake. I'm not very good at managing forces in China. So he is moving this unit presumably north toward Changtha, where we have a very weak force. Now, we don't have nothing. We have 40 infantry assault value. We've got some anti-aircraft guns, some Bofors, um, so that'll be helpful in any air attacks. We also have... Uh, what does it look like? 40 Chinese rifle squads. No disruption, no dispersion. Those 40 troops have uh, three forts uh, that they're sitting behind. Now, depending on what he's sending, he may be able to overrun them very quickly, um, but we'll see. Uh, we are moving troops in that direction. Um, you can actually see the troops over here uh, that are moving that way. There'll be a couple more days. So tomorrow, they're at 33 miles, so tomorrow they should be in this hex. If these troops keep moving at their present pace, they may actually get to Changtha next turn. It's unlikely they will be able to assault Changtha next turn, however, because he won't be able to change their actual sort of uh, alignment. So the real question comes down to whether these troops can arrive in time, it, depending on what he has here. My guess, he moved very quickly. He moved a single unit. So my guess is this is probably an armored unit, which is moving very quickly, but hopefully doesn't have a lot of assault value. Might only have 30 or 40 assault value. With these troops behind three entrenchments, that should help them hopefully not get overrun by an enemy shock attack. In the event he gets here next turn, that could be trouble, because my assumption is next turn our troops will be here, and then it will probably take two turns until they can get to Changtha. If his armor overruns our troops in the span of the next two days... We do have 1,300 assault value to try and dislodge him, but we don't have any anti-tank guns or anything like that. Some of the cores might have light anti-tank guns. Oh, some of these do, 37 millimeter anti-tank guns. Okay, so if he does overrun the base there, we may be able to rapidly retake it, but we'll be forced into a shock attack situation across a river. And if he can bring in the additional troops up from Changsha in the meantime before we can get there, it could be an interesting fight, especially with if, he, if it is something stronger than an armored unit. That may be problematic. But if it's just an armored unit, we may lose the city when we may retake it. Uh, the 1300 is definitely not enough to stop the troops that are coming north from Changsha, because I'm assuming that's the direction he's moving them now. But it, it should be enough to hopefully buy some time. Likewise, the 45th Chinese Corps staying behind at Yichang to buy time against the Japanese troops that are advancing out of Hankou against it. The bulk of our Changsha forces, meanwhile, are here at Sigaton. Uh, and there are 4,900 assault value in this base. They are moving west toward uh, Shaoyang uh, and eventually north toward uh, Chikikang. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake here in the sense that if he's able to take Changtha, then he is only 120 miles away from Chikikang uh, and cutting our troops off uh, from their retreat north from Shaoyang. Um, now, in the event that, uh, that you know, his troops beat us here, then the, the 5,000 plus uh, assault, value, actually 6,000 plus assault value right here is probably all going to go down in one massive feudal river crossing. Um, and again, the distance between this base is 120 miles or really two hexes, 80 miles. Um, the diff well, sorry, actually, they're 46 miles each, I think. So 92 miles plus really, okay, so 138 miles. Um, whereas the difference between here is, is the same distance, but the terrain is more rough. So presumably we will move more slowly across it. Um, so we'll see, but, um, those troops are already moving in that direction. Uh, so that's good for us. These troops are already at 40 miles, so they will, they should definitely arrive, uh, at, 
uh, Xiao Yang next turn. Um, I don't know if he's going to press troops north from Hanyang to try and cut us off. The reason I retreated west instead of north is I knew these troops were going to move south toward Changtha, and I assumed he would be a little bit more sluggish in his response than he has been, uh, and that would allow me to both defend both of these cities before he could get in and cut us off. Because again, even if we retreated north, the terrain's a little bit better, but if he had heavy armored units, and we know he has armored units in China that move forward here to take Xiaoyang, he could have rapidly gone up this other road as well to try and cut us off. So it's a little bit of a dilemma. Um, you know, we'll see. I'm hoping these troops can at least get in here and delay him long enough that uh, even if he does beat me to this city, we can assault the city and then hopefully cause him to stick around for a little bit. But but again, if he gets his 5,000 or 4,000 assault value in the city and we try and cross with 1,300, we're going to get absolutely chewed up. So we'll see. Now, we do have troops at Tuyan. We got an element of a core here. So we'll go ahead and order a deliberate attack. It doesn't look like they took the city, but it does look like he must have pulled his airborne units out with aircraft because there's nothing here. So it is empty. We will retake this base that will open the supply line south back into Quiling, back into Luchou. I suppose the alternative is if we beat him to Xiaoyang and he assaults us at Xiaoyang and we rout him now that we have 5,000 plus assault value, in the event that he does beat us north, we could always advance south to try and retake Kenyang. And then we would have a rail line that we could swing north almost all the way out to Kuiyang. That might actually be a better route if we can do enough damage. These are a lot of troops. I think they had about 2,000 assault value. If we can really rough them up at Xiaoyang, we could advance on Henang and then even threaten his flank of his supplies at Changsha, depending on how much he pushes north to Changtha. So there are options here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what option we'll take, but there are options nonetheless. Um, but best case scenario is these 1,300 assault value get to Changtha, and then he runs into them and they die. Uh, meanwhile, he does still have airborne units at Ch uh, Chikikang, uh, at least one airborne unit here. Uh, we have troops across the river, but not enough to assault. They're mostly artillery uh, units, and they won't be able to do a shock attack and have any chance, really, because there's just not there's no real infantry there. We are trying to get troops there. We have troops rapidly moving. 105 assault value of the 96th Chinese Division, as well as a good amount of artillery. They're 184 miles away um, from Chikang. Uh, but that's where they're moving to. So they've got good roads down to Quilang. They can swing east here, hopefully pretty quickly. They've already moved south from, from Chongqing. Um, now, I don't know if 105 assault value will be enough to take the city, but I, I will likely also take the 105 assault value from them, take the 110 assault value from the guys uh, currently at uh, Tuyan, and then we can assault whatever they have here. I want to I, I think this was the Raider Regiment, which will be more difficult to dislodge. But with a lot of artillery, that should be something we can do. Additionally, we can always pull troops north, and we un un we ultimately will be moving troops from Changtha as well uh, to get them over there. So that's the situation there. Supply for the, the former uh, Changsha forces looks good. You have the, f the hex is low on supply. It's a third of what is required or requested. Uh, but we do have all the units fully in supply in red there. So that's good for us. Or sorry, in, in white there. If they're in red, that means they're out of supply. If they're in white, that means they have supply, uh, sufficient supply. So that's good. Um, all the troops there are in supply. These guys actually have almost double the required supply at Xiaoyang. So that's good. Um, hopefully we didn't leave, leave too much behind at Changsha. I'm not sure if the supply flowed out of the city in time for us or not. Um, we also have additional troops heading north. So we've got the 52nd Corps and the 64th Corps, which are all heading up to Tuyan. Um, if I lose the southern line here, it doesn't mean as much to me. I think the reality of the situation with the fact that he's already taken Hankou is we're almost certainly going to be pulling back to a defensive line near Chongqing uh, and leveraging the massive fortifications that we already have there. Um, I probably need engineer vehicles there. This probably won't get any better. It might be the best it can be. That's why it's red. But level six fortification is pretty mighty. The point is, I think the Chinese front is probably already lost, but we'll see, um, at least in the south. Um, but as much as we can chew them up and bleed them, that's pretty pretty typical. Uh, in terms of the Flying Tigers, they're currently at Chongqing. Um, what are they doing? Actually, they're not at Chongqing. Yeah, they are at Chongqing. Sorry. Uh, they're currently training... We can see here we have 51 fighters, uh, 29 of them that are ready are hurricanes, and we've got 15 flying tigers up here in the north. Uh, we also have one flying tiger that's left behind, 
at uh, Changthe that is currently not really doing anything. I don't want to fly more aircraft into these any of these hexes here because they're too low on supply. Aircraft will eat through supply. So we have a good number of fighters up here that can help, but until we reopen these, these supply lines, that's, that's asking for trouble. Um... Yeah, I don't want to fly a massive amount of sorties over Changtha because in order to do that, I would have to rebase my aircraft. I don't think one, two, three, four, five, six. If there's seven hexes away, can the Flying Tigers get there? No, they can't get there. The Flying Tigers don't have the ability to carry drop tanks, and they can't get there, unfortunately. One hex too short. They'd have to rebase forward, and we don't have the supplies for that. We could do that with drop tanks with the British aircraft, but honestly, I don't think he's going to bomb Chang Tha. I think if he's going to bomb anything, and he did last turn, it's going to be these Chinese troops that are trying to race to Chang Tha before he can get there. You noticed he bombed; he, he did bomb these troops, and two of them did switch into uh, combat formation rather than march formation, and combat formation is a slower march. So, um, you know, if I could, what I would do is I would unfollow these troops so that way if they they hit some units and force them into a combat maneuver so they move slowly then everybody doesn't move slowly the problem is at this point in time all of these units are set to follow if i cancel their move orders and try and switch them over to something else they kind of go back to zero and you have to you have to restart so obviously not exactly measuring their specific spot at a given point in time you'd lose 23 miles of progress uh, we're unloading those cargo ships. These guys are already unloaded, so we'll go ahead and undock these ships, return them to Cape Town. Uh, Rangoon, meanwhile, continues to see its supplies increase. It's up to 32,000 now, by the way. These guys are already going back, so we've got, we've got, we continue to get a good amount of cargo ships. These two cargo ships are going back in and out of the port of Rangoon with, with, you know, while maintaining, uh, pretty good, um, I, we haven't even lost any of the ships yet. He's allowing us to continue to pour more and more supply into the city, slowly but steadily. So we've got three more merchant ships on the way as uh, another three are about to leave. These guys actually are about to leave too. There's only about 700 supply left there. So I'm going to go ahead and send these guys in as well. So that'll bring another 29,000 supply in between these two three uh, ship task forces. Um, I think I've got additional ships that are kind of holding steady off the coast. Uh, these are troop transports. <clears throat> um, why didn't they unload? When wouldn't these guys have unloaded at uh, at Chittagong? All right, I'm not sure where I want them to go, but we're going to pull the troop transports back to Colombo. I don't want to be using troop transports in this mission here on either of these convoys. So we're going to pull all the APs out. I don't even know if they have enough supply to get to Colombo. But I really can't afford to lose... They don't, so we'll send them into Chitty Kong. I really don't, I can't afford to lose too many APs in aggressive forward actions. So we'll we'll just drop them at uh, Chitty Kong. They'll drop their supply there. It'll be, I mean, it's useful uh, for deploying, suppl deploying supplies in India as well. Um, uh, I'm doing well, Mexicans. How are you guys doing? All right, so those guys are all doing their thing. Meanwhile, we saw the Japanese continuing to move up the coast of the Dutch East Indies. We haven't spotted their carriers out here. We haven't spotted any indication of enemy carriers. Um, our own carriers are currently at Perth refueling, I believe, or they're done refueling, but they're currently sort of refitting in Perth. We didn't send them to repair because we wanted the ability to get them out as quickly as we can. So all of our carriers are currently at Perth. We have five fleet carriers, one of them British, and one light carrier that is also a British carrier. Um, looks like we've got eight albacores, and then we also have this sort of non-carrier trained. Uh, oh, these are carrier trained and capable. Are these guys not carrier trained? These guys are just carrier capable, okay. So we should actually switch this squadron out, if we can, to Albacores. 
I don't have enough. I don't have enough swordfish. Oh, I do have some though. I should be able to pull some. Not carrier train capable ship. Not in dock at port. Unable to operate planes. Insufficient supply. Oh, okay. Um, I don't like the idea of operating these guys forward deployed. You weren't made redundant? That's good. It's good to hear, Mexicans. Um, I also don't even think I would probably deploy the Hermes in any sort of operation anyway. It's too slow, 24 knots. But we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, we've got these other task forces here. We're actually unloading fuel. Uh, these guys should dock. We've got this cargo task force here. Um... We'll disband and keep them in port for now. Surface task force. These guys disband. This tanker task force is refueled and ready to go. So let's get them out to Cape Town where we now have fuel. Okay. ASW. We'll drop those destroyers into port. And ADs. We'll drop them too. Okay. So uh, that's the situation in Perth right now. We've already got a task force of heavy cruisers, light cruisers, and destroyers, all which suffered damage on their way to Cape Town for repairs. We've got the light cruiser Sumatra, which escaped from northern Australia despite being hit by Japanese torpedoes. She's on her way to Perth relatively safely, I think. Uh, meanwhile, if we check on Cape Town and we take a look at the ships that are currently under repair, we've got the battleship Prince of Wales and the battle cruiser Repulse. The Prince of Wales is still 303 days out from being repaired. The Repulse is 75 days, so a little bit over two months. But they're making progress on her. She's down to 14 major flood damage, 21 total, or sorry, engine damage, 21 total engine damage. Flood damage is only seven, so that's actually very good. Her watertight compartments are well within uh, norms to be able to operate. The 24 systems damage is a bit high. I wouldn't want to send her into combat with 24 systems damage, but nor 24, 21 engine damage either. She's slow, um, but, uh, but still. Uh, Prince of Wales still a ways away. Is there anyone else repairing right now? Oh yeah, Queen Elizabeth. Doesn't Elizabeth have a withdrawal date coming up? She's down to 11 systems damage. Should be done in seven days. So pure side. Did I see a withdrawal date on there? Scheduled withdrawal April. Okay. Um Yeah, a couple of these ships will be coming off in five days or so. Canopus fourteen days. It's all good news. Uh, meanwhile, we've got some uh, troop transports on the way to Aden. We've got, I think, enough troops here to... Yes, we do! We got the machine gun units out of India. We put them in Aden, and now we can form the 7th Australian Division. Currently, it is an amalgamation of parts. Uh, three Australian brigades, an Australian Division Cavalry Regiment, uh, some machine gun detachment. We can go ahead and reform everybody, rebuild it into a single unit, 481 assault value, 83 or 88 morale, 61 experience. This is another one of those crack units that we definitely need to be careful with. We don't want to get them sunk at sea because these are the kind of guys that can go toe to toe with the Japanese infantry and beat them. So, um, in many cases, anyway, they've got the morale, they've got the experience, they've got the equipment. These are good troops. 72 25 pound artillery pieces. These guys are good. Um, desert rats that are uh, transferred to the Pacific. So we do need to get them out of here. I'm not sure where we're going to send them yet, but I am going to start the process of loading them up on ships. Um, so we'll go ahead and do a, a, well, actually, should I do an amphibious or should I do transport? Amphibious will get them on quicker. We won't have to strap move them. Um, we've got a couple of fast uh, ships as well, 21 knotters. We've also got a couple of 18, so we'll go with the 18 or knots or better, so we kind of have a fast convoy, if you will. I'm not sure if this is enough to carry everything, though. We'll do three the three destroyers here for escort. There's no risk as long as they're off map anyway. He can't deploy troops there. So also, I guess we'll drop it down to 17 knots. 
Um, is that enough? There's no more fuel here for these guys, but it doesn't really matter. They've all got enough fuel. Well, they're all docked. 87,000 tons of total shipping. They have 27,240 troop load available. We've got plenty there. 24,000 cargo load is required. We only have 11,000 there, so we need more cargo load. Um, so we'll actually transfer. I don't really have much of a choice. We'll have to transfer in the 15 uh, not ships as well. I could go with the cargo ships, but the cargo ships are slow. Um, oh, wait, I had more 16 knotters down here. Also, they're going to be too... The task force is going to be too big to dock. So I might need one of the cargo ships, but they're too slow. Um, load troops. Yep, still not enough cargo. We'll have enough when the uh, when the new task force comes in, but they're 16 days away. I don't know if I can afford to wait that long. Can I make them go flank? They're not taking any damage. They're completely out of fuel. Maybe flank is a bad idea. I don't think they take damage off map, but... Um... The Queen Elizabeth would be great for you for it, but she's way out to Cape Town, and she's also currently under repair. I think, you know, if we wait seven more days, we could get her there, but by the time she gets there, the other troop convoys are going to be there. So we'll think about it. Do we have any APs coming out in that section? I went the wrong way. We have three days Karachi. Well, oh, that's too many days. Nobody's coming in, in, in a reasonable amount of time. I mean, I could use the faster cargo ships. It just slows me down more than I wanted to be slowed down. But we could do that. Um, if we do amphibious we do the let's do the biggest troop transports first 60 oh god this is a big ocean liner 6700 troops two of them by themselves is almost enough these two by themselves can carry all the troops in that division we could break the convoy up we could do it into multiple pieces that's an option i don't want to put all my you know all my sh troops on a single ship anyway because that'll be a little bit risky from a you know if they torpedo us we would lose a huge chunk of our force so we're probably better off splitting them up anyway so let's do this actually let's go ahead and we will they're docked up 103,000 tons and then what we'll do is we'll split this into two task forces once everybody's loaded up. And we'll send the cargo ships separate. The other guys are much faster. The other guys will have the troops, while the cargo ships will have mostly the equipment. So we'll load troops. 7th Australian, yes. You can see here that the cargo load being used out of a total of 26,000. It's basically giving us a, a, a orange color there, warning us like, hey, you're kind of pushing it in terms of the cargo load. You can do it, but you're you're you know you're very vulnerable. Basically, not a lot of room for extra supply either. For now, we'll say Karachi, but that's not going to be their ultimate destination. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. So this the Seventh Australian Division is on the way. The Sixth is already out there somewhere. I don't remember where. They're somewhere at sea. Oh, yeah. They're over here. Okay. So they're way far west. They're giving a really wide berth to everything. They're going to swing in to Australia. Why am 
I sending him to... All right, let's give him new waypoints. I want to keep him as far west as I can. Just to avoid the likelihood of running into anything. Um, Gem and Wilch, this is War in the Pacific. This is a 10-year-old game by Matrix and Slytherin. It is an absolute behemoth of a game. Units are modeled down to the battalion level, in some cases company level, and uh, ships are at an individual level, including like basically all the merchant ships. Aircrafts down to the squadron level. This is a super detailed World War II sort of grog game, if you will. All right, so that's that. The Philippines, I don't think I need to do anything in. I kind of messed with my subs off screen last time, so they're kind of moving around to different positions. Um, trying to get a bunch of subs around truck again. We've got one out here, but I think it's mostly just detecting patrols. You can see here our troops in, in Bataan still have 30,000 supply. That's well over their requirements for the moment. Their uh, effectiveness is very high. Their morale is not great. It's not terrible. How are the headquarters units? Who's commanding this now? Is it still, it's still Douglas MacArthur? Really? Who was the general who we gave command to that surrendered? I can't remember his name. I don't feel like I see him in the list. I'm not down to the last man yet. Wainwright? Yeah, I don't see Wainwright on here. Well, shucks. Thomas Charles, way better. Hey, hey, MacArthur. Thomas Charles, or sorry, Charles Thompson. 71 land. You've got a paltry 59 land score. His naval score is better than yours. Air score is better. But even uh, Millard Harmon, better air and land general than uh, than little old Mac. Uh, better administrator, too. Less aggressive, though. Anyway. Uh, MacArthur should be an assault HQ. Interesting. Thomas Charles could be... That would cost 200 political points. I'm not going to do that. That's so absurd. Why does it cost so much? He should have just been pulled out anyway. Isn't he gone by now historically? Anyway. All right. So we looked at uh, China. We looked at uh, the Burma Theater. Uh, supplies for Australia kind of already. Um, We are unloading supply at Port Moresby with our AP and our destroyer there, the Lyacon, unloading a 1,000 supply. I don't know why we're not docked. We probably should be. Um, Port Moresby has 8,000 supply. It's about to get up to 9,000. The units there require 1,200, so that's a pretty healthy surplus, I think. We are up to 255 assault value. The additional companies that were all marching there all got there. So everybody is here that uh, that we can hope to be here in the immediate term. We got that battalion of Australian troops there as well. So 255 garrison assault value, level 3 fortifications. Um, overall, the biggest problem with the Port Moresby force is most of the units have very low morale. I'm still waiting on the additional troops, so the Port Moresby brigade cannot be formed yet because we're waiting on um, their additional units. Uh, if we look at the organization here, we can see in nine days we're getting the B Company of uh, New Guinea Rifles that will arrive in uh, Sydney, and then we can send them north to try and form the Moresby Brigade to get an efficiency bonus. We could try and pull some troops out of Oz to, to reinforce them up there, but it is pretty vulnerable. We weren't really willing to risk much. We risked a, a moderately valuable AP and if he puts any amount of aircraft in Rabal, anything going this way will sink. We even lost uh, a uh, merchant ship off the coast of Australia this last turn, I think it was. Fortunately, this tanker, the Simmeries, is still still plodding along, trying to get to Sydney and to its, uh, to its uh, shipyard there. It's not too valuable, 12 assault value. 
Any info on Japanese troops moving to Port Moresby? Not really. Uh, we've got two enemy units. We don't know their size. They're moving through mountains, so they're moving slowly. What, what did I? What am I doing? Um, in terms of SIGINT, take a look here. Bunch of units and where they're located. Not seeing much in the way of who's planning to do what. Yeah. Okay. I I mean I can try and send another battalion to Moresby. It's just I have to be mindful that it's not safe. So I've got a I don't want to lose troops at sea, if you will. No sign of Japanese shipping anything around the South Pacific, so that's all good. Cobalt 60, thanks for the follow. Um, yeah, nothing around here. Penryn Island has our combat engineers, port service. 19th combat engineers, we dropped them here a little while ago. They've got sufficient supplies. They're building up the forts. The forts are already up to level, level 2. We can get them up to level 6 here. These engineers build forts fast. I think it was a level 0 fort like a week ago. Leo 24, thanks for the follow. Um... We've got additional troops on the way to Palmyra, 2nd Marine Raiders, 2nd USMC Field Artillery Battalion. Um, some troop transports just arrived at Sydney, or sorry, um, San Diego. ASW patrol down there as well. I think we still have the Americal Division here, yeah, we do. We've switched them into Strat Move. They're planning for Nomaya along with the 754th Tank Battalion. I think the intent is to move these guys to New Zealand. Crack American Division that we have unlocked to our Pacific Fleet Headquarters. 91 morale. 41 experience isn't great, but it's probably our biggest, best American unit at the moment. 754th Tank Battalion is pretty darn good, too. 53 Stuart Light Tanks, 75mm GMC Half-Tracks, 81mm Mortars. Um... A lot of these other units, though, like the 3rd Marine Regiment, is currently restricted. We have to pay 78 political points to unlock them, to use them. We could, but we only have 515 or 516 political points to begin with. I would like, I'm curious, so each one of these regiments costs 500, or oh my god, 783 points to pull each of these three regiments of the 40th Infantry Division. They're all at Los Angeles. If we build the 40th Infantry Division... This unit would be very good as well, 376 assault value, but it would cost 2,330 assault, oh my god, or political points. So I'm going to divide that back up because we are never going to get that much in the bank. The 125th is locked to the west coast. I can't fly him in to Port Moresby, guys. They're too far, and I don't have the, the airlift to get him there. Even if I move him from Townville, I don't have the transport aircraft in Oz to do it. Fifth Armored, that's also locked. San Francisco, do we get any more, any more units there? Seventh Motorized, also locked. All you political soldiers, no one wants you to fight. Uh, the 138th. SEP Infantry Regiment, we do have the points for, but it would chew up almost all of my points. It's also not that great of a unit at 103 assault value. 150, the 159th Motor Infantry Regiment is a little bit better than that. And it's actually, is that cheaper? I still don't want to just spend 400 political points at the drop of a hat. Ship situation. Um... In terms of ship availability, well, if we look at ship availability, we've got, in terms of battleships and carriers coming, we've got 18 days and we'll get the Hornet, so we're less than a month away from getting another aircraft carrier. Uh, the Wasp doesn't come till June. The, when's our first, oh, yeah, when's our first battleship? I don't see the battleships on here. North Carolina, June 10th. We get a Washington, South Dakota, Indiana later this year. Um... Heavy cruisers. When do we start getting more of those? I'm going the wrong way again. June 15th, we'll get the Quincy. 18 days and we get the... Why is it... 
I'm not sorting by ETA, am I? So we get the Vincennes in 18 days, the Newcastle in 24 days, the Devonshire in 53 days. Um, we just got a new light cruiser. I think it showed up in Mombasa. The Van Hammershek. It's a anti-aircraft cruiser, although uh, anti-aircraft value of 400 is pretty damn good. She's a, she's a Dutchman. Four-inch guns and then some two-pounders. 20 millimeter Orlikens and radar guided. So this is a good ship. At least in terms of its equipment. So that, that could be a, a nice addition to a carrier group. A 400 anti-aircraft light cruiser. If we compare that with what we have at Perth uh, versus the other cruisers. The, um, let's see here. Northampton heavy cruiser only has 286 anti-aircraft value. 286 for the Chicago. The Astoria, which is a newer model, the New Orleans class of heavy cruisers, has 530. But again, that light cruiser has almost the same anti-aircraft fire as a heavy cruiser. The Deroyter, the Dutch ships actually have some pretty good anti-aircraft values. 380 for the Deroyter. The um, the British Durban D class, the British, the British Durban uh, uh, D class though, 101. So. Just giving you an example there. Uh, the Armada at Perth. I don't know what my plans are yet, Jack Tank. We will see. We will see. Right now, mainly to not get sunk. That's interesting. So, as you'll remember, we pulled our battleships back to Pearl. They were going to go for a bombardment of Midway, but they got stalled and they stopped moving and they just kind of sat there under enemy recon fire for like three or four days. So rather than just leaving them out there to eventually get caught by something, you know, I imagine if X-Tier GC's battleship's just kind of sitting here for like three days, he's probably going to react. So we pulled the battleships back to Pearl. They're on their way. They're still moving at full speed, but they'll be there in a day. I'll slow them down to mission speed. They should arrive at night, even at mission speed. I don't want to burn more fuel than necessary. You can see here the Idaho, the Colorado. They're all below 40% fuel. Those guys are gas guzzlers in the first place. How did I lose Midway in February 42? Well, XTRG sent like a regiment of Japanese infantry out that way. And, um, you know, there's not a lot the Allies can do to stop the... If the Japanese had sent a strong force in February 42, they would have lost Midway also. Um, okay, so we did detect a enemy task force over here. We sighted nine ships to the southwest of Midway. You can see our recon claims they are two heavy cruisers, a seaplane tender... Two heavy cruisers, a seaplane tender, and a destroyer. Nine ships. Um, that's not... Yeah. I agree with you, Max. It's got to be carriers. We He detected a task force of multiple battleships off the coast of Midway probably almost a week ago now. So if his carriers were... I mean, it seems a little bit quick. I guess he could have flank speed sped them, but a week? He could make it there in about a week. He could definitely send the carrier. If they were sitting at Kwajalein, we haven't seen the carriers in a while. I thought they were further back by truck or maybe, you know, out that way or maybe maybe um, shifting west toward uh, the Dutch East Indies. But nine ships, heavy cruisers, a seaplane tender. The seaplane tender could have easily been misidentified. He wouldn't have sent two heavy cruisers or even three heavy cruisers or even four heavy cruisers to deal with a task force of battleships. He's not stupid. We know he's got like four or five battleships out this way near Ambon because they keep bombarding the place. Japan isn't rich enough in battleships to be able to have four or five battleships bombarding in one place and have six or seven battleships swinging in in another place. The only thing this really could be is carriers. Again, he's not stupid. He's not going to send heavy cruisers out this way. The only question is, are these his light carriers, which we most recently saw near Timor? But that was only like a week or two ago. So I don't think there's any way his CVLs could have gotten out that far that fast. So this has to be, if not the entire Kitty Butai, then a sub-portion of the Kitty Butai. Uh, hopefully, I'm assuming he, was a, he would try and catch these guys. You know, he probably picked them up. He probably raced them out this way. 
and um, you know, uh, was hoping to catch our battleships as they were leaving Midway. So it's actually, it looks like it's a good thing that we pulled our battleships back because, again, I was getting real nervous. They had been sitting there detected for three days, and they still hadn't bombarded. We would have committed them to two more days in the area with the bombardment. We pulled them back, and it looks like they may have gotten out in time. Um, I want to move these tankers at flank just to try and get them back to Pearl a little bit more quickly. These guys, he could try and race down on them. Uh, we also probably want to get our, our fighter aircraft at Pearl uh, on slightly higher state, state of readiness. Fatigue is at 16. I'll bump these guys up to 60 cap, and then we're probably going to do a surge up to 100 cap next turn. I don't think he'll get to Pearl this turn. Even if he flank speeds it, it's unlikely. But he has been detected, so we'll we'll bump it up to six for all fighters in the hex. Uh, the other nice thing is I think we have a lot of flak here. Zero? You get a you get a portion of flak for the ships in harbor. Although there's probably not a lot of anti aircraft in harbor right now. Because the battleships that are in harbor aren't ready. Oh, the Nevada's ready. Great. Okay, so the Nevada, while we were out at sea, the Nevada finished repairing. So that's good. So we got another battleship there. We got another one, the Oklahoma. It'll be ready in 37 days. The California and Tennessee are both a year out. Um, but we've got five battleships on their way back to port with a lot of anti-aircraft fire. So I don't know if a second attack on Pearl would be suicidal, P. Warner, just because we've got 90 fighters that are all ready. Fatigue levels are manageable. We probably would like more pilots. just to try and keep the uh, fatigue level down. Oh, uh, we do have some P-40s here. Okay, 13 of them. But we need to make sure we have enough pilots in these air aircraft. A couple of P-40s. Uh, and the, uh, some of the aircraft aren't all that bad. 20 P-40s? Okay. Okay. The experience on some of these units is pretty solid, too. 60 plus. So that's good to see. So yeah, some of these units, all almost, almost the the vast majority of our fighters, the twenty four Mohawks, the Mohawks, the sh oh no, it's actually not bad. The Mohawks not terrible. The Warhawk and the Mohawk are the majority of our fighter aircraft. Four of our squadrons, all but one of our squadrons, have better than sixty experience. So these are actually pretty good aircraft. Um, the Warspite arrived in Pearl. I don't know, two three weeks ago from uh, from Canada. Um, she had refitted in Canada, so. I think with those aircraft, that should be good. The other sort of silver bullet here for a second attack on Pearl is I don't think he gets to use torpedoes if he attacks Pearl a second time. My recollection of the rules is the rules give the Japanese two special rules on the bombing of Pearl Harbor the first time around. One of them is that they're allowed to use torpedoes in port, which typically the game doesn't allow torpedoes to be used on port attacks. Um, but it's sort of like the, the rule because Japan did historically. And then the other is that uh, the game allows the Japanese in their initial Pearl Harbor strike to have a special like 800 kilogram bomb, which was a repurposed 16 inch artillery shell. Uh, and so that was something that Japan used specifically for the attack on Pearl, but is not something that they used regularly afterwards. And so their dive bombers go from carrying, I think, 800 kilogram bombs. I think his dive bombers only carry 250 kilogram bombs. They're very accurate, very effective dive bombers, but they're not great against heavily armored ships. Um, and so even if he does another attack there, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as devastating. Uh, and he'd lose a lot of attrition. Um, yeah, I guess, Cushion, but I don't think the 16-inch shells would be very useful against moving ships. And it's unlikely that the Japanese would catch Pearl as off guard. So I, I think they would be doing what they can to 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 draw you know to maneuver even in port. You know whether it's with tugs or whatever. Also, I don't I don't uh, even if that's not plausible, I don't know how nimble the aircraft are carrying a, a much larger bomb than they were designed for. Eight hundred kilogram bomb depends on pilot experience. Is that that's in the rule? Oh, okay. I still thought that was a Pearl Harbor only thing, but uh, we do have a destroyer out at Johnston, which is a little bit vulnerable. We do have some other ships that are on their way back to Pearl, but there's nothing really between Johnston Island 
and whatever these ships are. Um, I don't have... Got a couple of ships in port at Johnston. He could swing south and try and bomb Johnston. Are these guys at full fuel? They're at 41%. This guy's at 84 systems damage. Let's get the ships in port out of there, so hopefully they don't get easily sunk. The Nautilus is in really rough shape from a system damage perspective, but his carriers aren't going to be doing ASW work, so it should be safe. I'm assuming it can still submerge with 84 sys. Um, Sub Patrol. Argonaut. She was able to refuel. I didn't know there was fuel at Johnston. Oh, there is. Okay. Does she have torpedoes? She does. Okay. Let's send these guys north then. Let's see if we can get up there. We'll move up there at full speed. Home port will be Pearl. We're going to burn through a lot of fuel getting up there, but I want to try and get there in time. Go ahead and send these guys up this way too. Subs use so little fuel in the first place that I think I'm okay with that. Um, okay. I was sending these subs down on like patrol convoys. We had one at Canton, one at Baker. We had one going to any VTOC, I believe it was. So we were sending them all over to kind of do some recon, but now that we have something we want to look at, uh, the timber is already kind of out of fuel. So is the Thresher. Both these subs are also pretty much out of fuel. I think those guys are all coming back from Japan. Yeah, I don't really have enough subs yet, uh, Kushin. And the torpedoes are terrible, so there's that too. Okay. And then we're also going to send the sub that's currently sitting off midway. South with a react order. I don't even... He's moving northeast, so he's moving this way. So maybe we should actually just go on a straight shot. But we'll see. Now that our battleships have pulled out, maybe his carriers won't linger long. Um, this also brings the other opportunity that struck in my mind. Now, our carriers are currently sitting south at Pearl, or at Perth. He is in the process of landing all along the Dutch East Indies. He has not yet gone for um, Java proper. We have troops at almost every one of the landing places in Java that would give him a little bit of a, a, rough, a rough time, at least in the south. We do have one or two empty hexes. But we're doing a pretty good job of, of garrisoning everything. Um, it's a little bit risky because he's got Nels and Bettys operating out of both Celebs and, Tim and Timor. But it might not be a terrible idea, at least to see what develops, to move our carriers up to Coast Coast Island. And then they can swing in and attack the Java landing if there's no carriers spotted. So I think that's something that I'll think about. I don't know if I want to do it today or if I want to do it later. Um, obviously, he's moving very quickly. So if we do it too late, we might miss out on the opportunity. The problem is most of our ships are a little bit beat down from moving all the way out this way. Um, you know, they've, they've taken a fair amount of damage. Now, three systems damage isn't bad. I think they were higher last turn. And one systems damage isn't too bad. So I'll think about it. Uh, does anybody know offhand what the rules are for um, ca American carriers at this stage? Do you basically have to operate in each, each individual carrier as an independent task force to avoid penalties? Or do you have the ability to operate them in task forces of two yet? Because I know Japan get like they, they need to work everything in one big task force, but the Americans actually get penalties based off the number of aircraft that are in a, in a task force. Uh, which, sorry, which B-17s are you talking about, uh, Newhauser? We don't have much at Pearl. We've moved them mostly to, toward Australia. 
I don't think we might have a couple of B-17s at Pearl. We'll do a naval search instead. Drop that down here, do this. They can't even get far enough. The, the B-17s can't d patrol far enough anyway. What about the ones in Australia? They're not, I mean, they're mostly on the East Coast. I think we've got like seven or eight of them. Uh, Kushin, the U.S. had a lot of coordination issues with their carriers early in the war. Probably not, Neuhauser. I don't think we can run raids on Timor. The airfield at Darwin is too small at this stage. It's only a level three. Nothing else on the northern Australian coast is built up enough. So we'd need to, we'd need to build up the, uh, the Darwin airfield to be larger. Remember, the Nels and Bettys are only two-engine bombers. They don't require the same... Mike, the penalties are not that relevant, even with four carriers. I thought it was like this big... Uh, it gets better, Cushion, as time goes on. I thought it was like this big coordination penalty. Are you telling me I'm better off just putting them all in one task force? We have some B-25s on the American West Coast. We don't have anything in Australia. Okay. I think we have some B-26s on the West Coast also. The rule I don't think goes it completely away, Cushion, but it, it gets much less less bad. If that's the right way to put it. Cap is not affected by coordination penalties. Okay. I'll think about it, guys. I don't wanna I'm not sure if the carriers like are they opt out? They haven't used any ops. Probably don't want to do full refuel. Do air combat. What if I throw the indomitable in there? Because I probably do want to operate with five then. The British carriers can take a punch. Five hundred and twelve for that CL. Okay, Keanu Reeves, Cushion. The Boise is kick ass. I love the Boise. All right, let's throw the eight ASW destroyers into this force because God knows I don't want to get hit by subs. We'll also do the four ASW destroyers. You would use one two-carrier task force and one three-carrier task force. Okay. I'm not going to use the Hermes. Uh, all right. I'm just picking the ships that are going to be participating. Um, I'll, I'll divvy up everything else after that point. Davy Wave Boo, thanks for the follow uh, Banjax1205 and Fatman279. Also, thanks for the follow. Okay. So we're told not to replenish, which I think means they won't use ops. They won't, which is good, sort of. Um, maybe what I'll do is for the ships that are at 100% fuel, we will put them in one task force, and for the ships that need to replenish... We will put them in another task force because I really don't want to send carriers. It's a bit of a long hike up there. Like if we send them to Christmas Island, just as an example, straight shot, it'll use half the fuel to get there and back without any combat ops or anything like that. That destroyer, though, has got a bit of ops penalties there. Why did they refuel? Yeah, we'll have to see. But I think that's what we'll do uh, is we'll send carriers north to be off the western coast of Java because I really do think, I don't know if his whole carriers, all of his carriers are at Midway. 
Japanese players are typically very... You're being very risky as a Japanese player at this stage in the game if you keep the Kidu Butai separated. But it is one of those very tempting things to do as a Japanese player because it can be highly beneficial to have your carriers in multiple places. But it really operates best as one unit. Now, if there's really only nine ships here, it's probably not the whole Kitty Butai. But even if he's pulled two or three of his fleet carriers east to deal with battleships, if we can find three of his carriers with five of ours, that might be an opportunity to give him a bit of a bloody nose and have like an early coral sea or something. Um, obviously, losing carriers on our end would be disastrous. Uh, especially at this stage of the war, but we could really make him think twice, even if we trade one for one in terms of carriers. If we can start weakening the Kitty Butai now, that would be huge. Yeah, Banjax has been out for 10 plus years. AE, Allied Edition, which is a mod of a 2000, has been out for 10 years. I think the original um, War in the Pacific, the struggle against Japan, came out in, I think, 2006. So that's 13 years. That's what this base game is based off of. And this itself was sort of a remake of a 1990s SS. I think it was SSI, right? Uh, the Pacific War. Uh, that uh, that was the original, if you will. But hey, if I find the the Kitty Butai, that would be great too, Warner. I'd be a hundred percent okay if we find the Kitty Butai. I think we should beat that. Anything we can do to weaken them, even if we don't find any carriers, if we just sink, you know, a couple of task forces at sea with with units, that would be great too. Uh, what do you mean by the drive-bys? I'm sure the carriers are just the drive... I mean, I'm sure he only sent the carriers to get the battleships. That's the only reason they're out there. Our battleships have been detected for four or five days out this way, or, or originally were detected four or five, maybe six days ago. I can't remember now. If he had them at Kwajalein, or if he had them at, you know, any we talk or truck, and he flanked them the whole way, and he had tanker support... He could get there. I mean, yes, it's risky. I, well, again, we don't know. He might have thought the battleships were part of like a carrier task force too, right? Like if you saw four battleships coming from Midway, you might think, oh, he's probably got carriers looking over him just in case, right? I mean, I suppose it could be a ploy, right? He may know that we, you know, he may know our carriers are in the south and this is like, I'll send some cruisers out there to think, you know, for him to think. I don't think he's, that would be like four moves chess. I don't think he's doing that right now. Uh, the, to me, this screams reaction to BBs seeing an opportunity. And if that's the case, then the, the battleship task force worked to perfection. If we pulled his carriers all the way out this way, even just some of them, then the battleship move on midway, even though it didn't drop a shell, worked to perfection. I don't think his his carriers are with the battleships hitting Ambon. Yeah, maybe he thought we were trying to land on Midway. We did send the slow slow battleships. Could have been the advanced bombardment task force, perhaps. In any event, I am pretty confident he has sent at least two carriers east, substantially weakening the Kitty Butai. No, no, no. I can't go after these carriers. If this is... So here's the here's the dilemma that I face. I believe there's at least two carriers here. My gut tells me because the way that you're supposed to play as Japan and because I believe um, XTRG is getting a lot of help. You know, he's been playing this game for over a year now. So he's, he's definitely more comfortable with this game. But he, he's... You know, I know he's read a lot of the forms. He's gotten a lot of assistance from different players, different things like that. And the way you play the game is you keep Jap Japan's carriers together. So this could be a scouting force out ahead of something else, but I don't think he'd send the cruisers out this way by themselves. So maybe the carriers are back here. And this is a scouting force, you know, with, with seaplanes to detect without risk of being detected. That That's possible too. But the key here is that he is definitely shifted at least two of his carriers east that's why I'm sending my carriers north here. If we detect his carriers, we will try to engage, assuming favorable odds near the in the Java Sea. If we don't have favorable odds, we'll just withdraw. And if his carriers are nowhere to be found, we will attempt to uh, avoid his land-based air as much as we can. 
uh, while re, re, you know uh, wreaking havoc on his landing forces. Additionally, the other thing here is since Singapore hasn't fallen yet, if he makes a play for Palembang, we could shift our troops, our carriers north, and bomb his, his landing forces at Palembang. So it's really about being in a central location to be able to dictate action. And moving our carriers to Perth gave us the choice to either deploy to the southwest Pacific or to the uh, to the Dutch East Indies area. And now we're making the choice to deploy to the Dutch East Indies area because we believe his carriers are out this way. And again, I really think if he sent his carriers to Midway, I don't think he sent two. I think he sent six or maybe four. He sent at least four, I think. Well, at least two. I don't know. I'm getting in my head, but what what care? I don't have any carriers at Pearl. Pearl has is carrierless. I have a hundred plus fighters that are uh, that are at the base though, but I have five fleet carriers at Perth that will be making the stab. So it's a pretty strong force. 335 carrier aircraft, 341 when you include reserves. Unfortunately, they're a little bit heavy on the dive bombers and not heavy enough on the fighters. But you've got 18 Wildcats there, 26 Wildcats here, 27 Wildcats here. 27 Wildcats there, so 2, 2, 1, 27, 27, 27, 26, was it? Or, no, this is 18. So 20, 22, 23, so almost 100 Wildcats. And then we've got 9 Fulmer 2s, which aren't very good. But then we've also got 6, or actually 9 Sea Hurricanes, which are pretty good. So we've got over 100 Fighters plus 200 strike aircraft. Um, I don't have any battleship support with these guys, Jack. Battleships are too slow at this point. I don't have any fast battleships. Uh, I wouldn't call it a death stack, uh, Jack. Well, again, remember, he already took Midway. So it's not a matter of him going after Midway. He's going after a battleship... We, we, like, five or six days ago, we had a battleship task force here. It was on its way to bombard Midway. It got detected and stopped. It didn't move. So then it, I told it to move, and apparently that second turn, actually, I think they got, originally it got detected here. The next turn, they only moved to here because they were moving at mission speed, not flank speed. They got detected again, so it was two days detection. Then I ordered them at flank speed to move into Midway, but instead of moving at flank speed, they waited and they refueled their ships to prepare for the run. Well, that refueling gave me cold feet because now they'd been under enemy air cover for three turns, and so I pulled them back two or three turns ago. So again, almost a week, and then this turn, these guys show up. So again, I think he raced something east from the marshals to try and intercept me. So we'll see. It's not going to be easy. I don't think we can really wreck the Japanese Navy in the area because they do have land-based aircraft at Mascar. They have land-based aircraft at Kopang. These guys will control with Betty torpedo bombers. Most of the Timor Sea out to the Australian coast. Kind of any anything inside this arc here would be dangerous for us to move our carriers into. I don't want to get Prince of Royal or whatever. But we'll move north of Java. It's unlikely his forces at Timor can't hit us this far north. And my assumption is he's been moving up this island chain very rapidly, so presumably he'll be moving for Java proper itself, and when he's there in a week or so, we'll be ready. Now that's the hope anyway. He could get there before we do. I mean, we're at least a week's sailing time away. But his, his ships at Midway are probably two and a half to three weeks sailing time away. And maybe closer if they go flank speed, maybe like two weeks away at flank speed, but that would completely wreck them and make them unable to be used. Not to mention burning all the fuel. So, that's the idea. Anyway, um, that's going to do it for tonight, guys. I've got to wrap up some other stuff here off screen. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Hope you guys enjoyed. China's not looking great, in my opinion, but we'll see what happens there. We've got this intriguing little operation in the southwest uh, that we're going to be pulling that we'll see how it works out. Again, nothing may come of this. We may This may be like Midway. We may get nervous. We may see something that scares us. We may pull back. But uh, I prefer to have the option to have the initiative. And uh, that's the plan right now. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to the new follower followers, Davey, Wooboo, Banjax, Fatman, Leo, Colt, Cobalt60. I can't see the rest of the names because the list was too long. 
Uh, but thank you, everybody else. Uh, and I can't alt-tab on this game because it will go to desktop. But thanks, everybody. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out.